Thank you. Sorry about that. Good evening, everybody. It's just about 5 p.m. Um, given that was the time that we were going to start, um, I will do the honors of calling the uh, first Hamilton Human Rights Commission meeting to order. Uh, let's uh, start by having a roll call uh, attendance vote here. Um, please state your name and say that you're here when, uh, let's start with Nancy. Nancy Steffes, I am here. <laughs> Jared. Jared Hughes here. Um, Elena. Elena Walsh here. Christina. Christina Holtz here. Anne. Ann Brady. We can't hear you, Anne. Even though you're not muted, we can't hear you. <laughs> we still didn't hear her. Oh, so we see her. We all recognize that she's here. Okay, hold on one second. Let me oh, there we go. Oh, now we're here. There you are. Here. Okay. <laughs> Anne Brady <Yeah>. here. <laughs> Sorry. <Okay. laughs> Maya. Maya Beach here. Russ. Russ Stevens here. Uh, Joanne. Joanne Copeland. Okay, not here. And Jamie Knutson. Jamie Knutson here. Okay. All right. uh, I'm going to share my screen briefly so we all see that we're working from the same agenda for this evening. And um, so we've called the meeting to order, and we have had um, we've had the roll call. So the next item on the uh, docket is to have an election of officers, and we should start with. Uh, uh, designating a chairman so that he can take over running this meeting. Uh, do I have any? Um, do I have any motions for a chairperson? So, don't everybody jump at once. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can make, I can make some motions, um, but. Uh, if anybody want to volunteer to be the chairperson. You know, you know, it might be a good idea to give a brief description of the duties of the chairperson. Maybe that will prevent some of the shyness that everyone has. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so mostly the chairperson is going to, uh, you know, be involved in helping to set the agenda, making sure the meetings get posted on time and uh, organize and, and manage the content of the meetings. So you'll, you'll, the chairperson will run the meetings, call to people to order, recognize people to be spoken, ask for motions, make sure that when you're in a Zoom environment that you're calling the roll call vote for all motions in a meeting. Um, I know almost, uh, if I believe all of you were on the uh, open meeting law training the other night, so that, that was really great. Um, I, you know, we the, in the time manager's office, we can work with whoever the chair is to help them uh, until they get comfortable with that role. Um, but uh, it's really kind of just to kind of manage the work of the of the committee. And you know, most good chair people do that with input from the whole committee. So it's just a matter of the person being able to uh, take the lead at meetings. So I will. Uh, I'll, I'll move that Ann Brady be the chairman. <laughs> I'm happy to take that role, although I will have to say that there are times where I get very busy, so I may have to call on others to help me from time to time. I'll second We, we have Russ, a statement of willingness. That's good. Russ Stevens seconds the motion. So as with all votes in a virtual meeting, they have to be by roll call. So uh, I will call the roll until we have a clerk. So, um, Nancy Steffes. Right, well, first of all, let me see. Are there any other? Are there any motions for anybody else to me? I have to ask yeah. that question. Yeah, or any discussion that we. Or any discussion on the motion. The motion's been moved, made, and seconded. And does anybody want to talk about this, or do we just want to throw it to Ann? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like throw it to Ann. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm surprised usually usually committees like this will nominate the person that's not there. So I'm surprised you didn't try to make it. Go away. <laughs> good news is that you didn't do that. So, okay, I'll call the roll. Um, Nancy Steffes. Aye. Aye. In favor of this. Uh, Jared Hughes. Uh, aye. Alicia Walsh. Elena Walsh. Elena Walsh, sorry. Aye. Christina Holtz. Aye. Ann Brady. Aye. 
Um, Maya, you're not a voting member, but we're going to ask you anyway. Maya Beach? Aye. Russ Stevens? Aye. And Jamie Knutson? Jamie Knutson, aye. Okay. Motion carries unanimously. Anne is now the chairperson, uh, the first chairperson of the Hamilton Human Rights Commission. Congratulations, Anne. Thank you very uh, much. <laughs> very good. <laughs> you now can do the same thing that I just did for vice chair and clerk positions. Okay. <laughs> Are there any nominations for vice chair position? So I I will move if no if nobody else wants to go, but and I I definitely I'm not I'm not gonna nominate somebody who's not here, but I would move to nominate uh, Elena Walsh. If she is willing. <laughs> you have a second on that motion? Second. Discussion. Are you willing? <laughs> uh, to be the vice chair, is um, is it acceptable to be chasing children during our meetings? Because <laughs> that's currently happening. <laughs> as long as it's okay for my cat um, to figure out for my cat to attend our meeting. <laughs> Okay, then. <laughs> okay. And well, all right, then. I'll continue to call the roll until we have a clerk. So, um, Nancy Steffest? Aye. Jerry Hughes? Aye. Elena Walsh? Aye. Christina Holt? Aye. Ann Brady? Brady, aye. Maya Beach? Aye. Russ Stevens? Russ Stevens, aye. And Jamie Knudsen? Jamie Knudsen, aye. Okay. One more time. We just need a clerk now. Now, the clerk's duties are a little bit different. They're actually a little bit more uh, involved. Uh, you will be keeping minutes for the meetings. We can get you some training to help you, a, a, a template to help whoever becomes the clerk uh, understand what the role is. Uh, certainly in this environment, we also always have the recording of the meeting, the live recording of the meeting, and um, we can arrange. I think going forward that uh, likely Zoom will be a part of future meetings, even when we return to meeting in person. So, um, you know, it's likely that you'd always have this to re this recording to uh, rely on as well to help you formulate the minutes. But the clerk's job is to keep minutes of the meeting. Uh, make sure you take note of all motions that are made, who made them, who seconded them, what the, the general points of the discussion were, and um, and then you have to turn those over. You know, about every you know within two weeks or so of each meeting, so that they can be ready for the next meeting um, and voted at the next meeting, and then those get recorded with the town clerk as the official record keeper. So, um, so. And we'll ask if there's a motion for- Is there a motion for anybody to be the clerk? I, I, have, um, I have an idea for this. I move that if she's willing, Christina Holtz be the clerk, if she has um, willingness and ability to do that. Um, I do have the ability to do it. I, we round robin it actually at the league. Um, and so I, I would have months when I would be doing it for two meetings. Um, so it would be my preference if it's not a round robin situation here to not take on the role right now. Okay. Because it's not a round robin situation here is my understanding. Yeah. Generally it makes it harder to keep track of making sure everything gets done right. properly. You get one person to right. do it. Well, I'll move on somebody. Um, you know, it won't be me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you, you know, you can all say no if you're not going to raise your hand. But I, I'd move <laughs> uh, Nancy Steffes be the clerk. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> you have a second. I se second. Any discussion? I already have one person say no and one person give a tentative lukewarm yes. So I said, <laughs> and Nancy, if you're out, I'd be happy to be the backup. Thank you. Thanks. And we're, of course, all happy to help with the process. 
Who was that that just spoke? Because I don't have the name associated with that. Christina. Is that Joanna? That was Christina Holtz. Who oh, said okay. we're yeah. here to help. Right, yes, so that I'd be happy to be okay. the backup if Nancy's not able to attend. Okay, that's something. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so on a roll call vote, Nancy Steffest. Aye. Jared Hughes. Aye. Elena Walsh. Aye. Christina Holtz. Aye. Ann Brady. Ann Brady, aye. Maya Beach. Maya Beach, aye. Russ Stevens. Russ Stevens, aye. And Jamie Knutson. Jamie Knutson, aye. All right, you have seated your officers. Um, so, and uh, I, know, I noticed that, that like, so the next thing on the agenda is the, just to go over the policy, but I did also notice, right, the policy does have this possible position of a lead on the town of Wenham commission. Um, you know, so yes, if somebody's somebody feeling that left well. out. That's different. That's the wrong thing. Yeah. Put that I was up. actually kind of interested in that. If if that is something that we're appointing tonight, I saw that it wasn't included on the agenda, so I was going to bring it up because I I saw it in the um, you know the document of the creation of the Human Rights Commission, mm -hmm. and I noted that uh, Wenham does have one set up to liaise with us already. I would move to nominate uh, Christina Holtz to be the liaison to the Town of Wenham Human Rights Commission. I would second that. Joe, do we know who from Wenham is our liaison from the Wenham board? Does anyone know from our board here who's our liaison from Wenham? I can tell you in just a minute. Let's see. Jeremy Gross. Thank you. So, um, yeah, this is perfectly all right for you guys to make this motion and decision. It, it, it left it open to the committee and it didn't have to be on the agenda for you to make that decision tonight. So you've got a motion, you've got a second. Um, Nancy, if you want, I can continue to call the roll for this meeting. Please do. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Nancy Stafford. Aye. Jared Hughes. Aye. Elena Walsh. Aye. Ann Brady. Ann Brady, aye. Maya Beach. Aye. Russ Stevens. Russ Stevens, aye. And Jamie Knudsen. Jamie Knudsen, aye. Okay. Do you want me to put up the, uh, I can share my screen and put up the uh, policy if anybody needs me to. That would be helpful for me. Yes, because I don't have it at my fingertips right now. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, there we go. Okay, so we've got the purpose here. I'm, and this is your meeting, so I'll let you decide how you want to address it. <laughs> Okay. Uh, surprise. Surprise, it's my meeting. Um, <laughs> all right, so here we are, our first exciting meeting of the Hamilton Human Rights Commission. And I have to say it is very exciting to me that we are here. So we are charged with this purpose of, uh, let's see, the town created this commission to affirm that the town of Hamilton is an inclusive community that has, as one of its core values, the freedom from discrimination, intolerance, disrespect, bigotry, other forms of micro or macro aggressions, hatred and oppression, and to reaffirm the town's commitment to upholding and defending the rights of all individuals to enjoy the free and equal, equal exercise of their rights and privileges as secured by the constitutions of the United States and Commonwealth of Massachusetts. 
And the second paragraph, this is me being an English teacher right now reading this to you. I don't think <laughs> I need to read it to you. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and my dogs, of course, are going to start barking right now. Um, so the way I've been presenting it to people has been that our job is really to ensure that everyone in Hamilton feels safe and comfortable in Hamilton and free to enjoy local affairs. And as our policy says, that includes, but is not limited to education. Whoa. Someone else want to read it? While I <laughs> Somebody else want to read? I can go ahead. It's not limited to education, public accommodation, access to town services, insurance, credit, banking and healthcare, regardless of race, color, ancestry, national origin, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, age, religion, disability, marital or familial status, military or veteran status, socioeconomic status, and or ex-offender status. Great, thank you so much, Maya. Ooh. Sun is coming to let that dog out. Um, do we need to go over it any more thoroughly? Yes, um, you might want to see if anybody has questions or. Um, Any questions about that? Is it is that clear to all of us what our charge is? Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. Great. So. Um, our duties are to serve in an advisory capacity to the Board of Selectmen. And um, we have several different jobs within that. So we can recommend programs, policies, and initiatives to promote diversity and inclusion and awareness and anti-discrimination in the town. We can promote we are charged with promoting an understanding of the diverse cultures within the town and surrounding areas by working with other municipal, local and regional human rights organizations through education, organization of community events, conferences, public speaking programs, educational panels, celebrations and other community actions. Serve as a resource to the Board of Selectmen with respect to issues that challenge any individual or group's enjoyment of their basic human rights in the community. And annually provide a written report to the Board of Selectmen or more often on the Commission's activities. As often as is desired by the Commission or requested by the Board of Selectmen, prepare written or oral reports on racial, religious, ethnic, gender, disability, age, and civic initiatives or relationships, including on police relations to cultivate and encourage an atmosphere of mutual understanding and harmonious intergroup relationships in town. Um, if you could scroll a little bit more, Joe. We have a lot of duties here. Um, let's see. Attend and support panels, meetings, conferences, celebrations, or other educational or community events held by municipal or regional human rights committees, private or public corporations, organizations, high schools, colleges, or universities. Serve as a portal for residents or visitors to report concerns, complaints, or questions of real or perceived discrimination or unequal treatment of individuals within the town of Hamilton. We may report or render recommendations on certain issues involving the town. So we may report concerns, complaints, questions, or other issues raised by residents or visitors to the town manager. We don't have the authority to investigate complaints, the power to subpoena witnesses or take sworn testimony, or the power to adjudicate or mediate the resolution of disputes between individuals or entities but we may bring such issues to the town manager for the town manager to figure out how those things get handled, it sounds like. Any questions or um, thoughts about any of those eight issues, duties that we have? I actually had a question that I thought might be something we could brainstorm on, which is how we can get the word out to to the town residents that we do serve as that portal. Mm -hmm. So um, 
I'd, I'd certainly welcome the Human Rights Commission, you know, uh, working on uh, any, any kind of text that you want to share with the town. I, we, we use the Selectman's Office, the town website, the, um, the Facebook, our Facebook page to highlight anything that you're working on. Um, and if you wanted to make an announcement that you're up and running and that anybody in the community who has uh, experienced or witnessed um, any kind of um, concern about the way people are treated, um, that they can bring those to you uh, for you to make sure they get brought to the right, um, the right kind of place to uh, investigate or, or look at it. You know, there'll, there'll be some things that, um, you know, you may decide are, are, are educational things. And we, we heard about some of those things, I think, in the, in the forum. Um, uh, and there'll be other things that, you know, would require the town manager and the police chief to, to take action. And that's, that's specifically why I'm not a, a voting member on this committee. Um, uh, you know, to keep me at an arm's length, I'm, I'll be aware of what you're doing, but I won't be, um, involved in the way you kind of conduct yourself so that if something has to come up to us, I can operate um, the way I'm supposed to independently. And what about uh, working with the schools to put together a flyer, even if it's a, a three fold flyer to put something out? And also, um, Joe, what about giving a couple minutes to Ann at the town meeting to announce, or you can mm -hmm. do your mm -hmm. annual report to the town and then Ann, you can announce it and Ann can come up and just give a couple three minute blurb at best. That's probably the, the only time we get that many town residents together at any one time in town, besides the uh, besides our, uh, our 4th of July uh, fireworks. Yeah. Which we may not have again this year. So we gotta be careful about that. Um, this is um, something that I, I had kind of earmarked was uh, in terms of how we create that portal is yeah. something I wanted to bring up and whether it's through the town website, we can create a, a sort of destination page for people to submit information either anonymously or as they feel comfortable identifying and, and how we would want to go about setting that up so that people can uh, submit directly to us. Right, and can do so somewhat anonymously if they feel most comfortable doing it that way rather than having to speak to one of us directly or, you know. Exactly, yeah, to, to allow them to share their identity as they feel as comfortable. comfortable, yes. So um, I can, so the good news is that Pat Shannon in my office, the uh, assistant to the town manager for community preservation and um, other programs is uh, working with our website developer right now on a refresh of the webpage. So we can add a page for the Human Rights Commission um, and we can have um, and I, I think we could probably associate an email address with that page um, and have access for the chairperson and, and perhaps vice chair mm -hmm. to receive those emails mm -hmm. or to be able to get in to log in to get those emails and then um, and then bring them as part of the business the next meeting uh, to the to the whole com commission. Could we even have like a contact us kind of thing that um, goes directly to email? So it has it instead of them having to compose an email, it has boxes to fill. So it's even more, a little more friendly for them instead of having to remember our email address and then fill it into their email that it, it just shoots straight to an email to us. We can set that, that possible. Yeah, we can do that. Yep. Thank you. Is uh, do any of you like maybe Jared uh, want to like put together like the either the form or like what information we want to get from people? I think it could be very simple for the most part. But yeah, I mean, I'm not a uh, a whiz at web development, but I can certainly. Um, uh, collate and, and work with Pat on what information we want on that page. I'd be yeah, happy so I'll, to help with that. I'll, tell, I'll tell Pat to work with you. Okay, uh, great. And that, um, and if you want to reach out, just in case I don't see him first thing, um, if you want to reach out to him as well, I'll let him know to be expecting a call from you. And you guys can work together. Like I said, he's working with Sterling now. Uh, that's something that they should be able to do pretty quickly and easily. You just need to tell them what fields you want, uh, or, you know, should be put together on that form. I'm sure they have a template for it. It won't be that hard to do. Yeah, great. Awesome. 
we could also put up the uh, as an attachment a drop down screen. We can put the policy up there with the mm -hmm. charges, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. put the name and members of the commission, their email addresses, or their you know contact information. Maybe someone wants to reach out directly to one of the members. Mm -hmm. um, you can definitely have the drop down screens to do that. I mean that that's easy enough to do with Sterling. We could have uh, this is maybe getting too grandiose. This might be getting to be too much for this one web page on the town website, but um, little bios so they know which areas of human rights we each have somewhat you know expertise in. So if they want to reach out to a particular person who knows more about a particular area. So they're more comfortable talking about to that person. It could be something too. I don't know. Tiny little like 300 word bios is, or 300 character bios is what I'm thinking. You know, I don't know if you if you go that far on the town website or not. Uh, going uh, back to sorry, uh, going back to sharing about and notifying re residents that we exist. Are we able to do a press release and ask the patch to post something or post on like town Facebook? Yeah, well, I, I can I can help coordinate uh, anything that you produce to go on the town Facebook and the town web page and, and as well as just the front page as an announcement. Um, a press release, if you wanted to write a press release and reach out to the patch or Hamilton Wenham Chronicle or somebody that, you know, that's that you're allowed to do that, so. Okay. I would, I would just, and I would say that, you know, maybe have the whole committee uh, approve what you're planning to send out. Remember, you can't, you have to do that right. over the meeting or you wouldn't right. be able to do it over email, so. Um. Right, I think um, this is maybe something to discuss in our next agenda item because we were talking about duties and this kind of got bigger than the, just the duties. So are there, I would like to take us back to that list of the, our, duties as the commission when we as we're discussing the policy and are there questions still on any of other of those i find myself uh wanting to be careful about um we're gonna, being on top of what events are happening and what things we want to mark and what we want to attend because it says, you know, we are to attend and support panels, meetings, conferences, celebrations, and other educational community events held by municipal or regional human rights committees. That um, gets big. So um, we'll try have to try to keep some kind of tabs on what's going on around and see how well we can stay on top of that, I think. But that so that just raises a little bit of a flag for me. But I think it leaves you the, the flexibility as a commission to decide which ones are appropriate. Yeah. How many you can attend? I mean, I don't think anybody expects a volunteer board to oh, attend no. everything all the time. So, um, you know, trying to get an idea of what's coming up and discussing it at a meeting, you know, to see if there's somebody that's able to attend. Sometimes you won't be able to get anybody that's able to attend a certain one. That that's perfectly all right. But any other questions or concerns about any of these items? I guess I'd like to walk through, say we, num I'm thinking about number seven, say we do um, are contacted by a member of the community with a complaint. Mm -hmm. um, what would be appropriate for um, our committee, our commission to, to do? Would we? Would it be appropriate to reach out and get more information from the person if they were open to it to provide um, all the details to to Joe, or um, are we just to hand off names and contact information? Um, I, I think at some point, and at some level, depending on on what the complaint is about, uh, it, it can vary, right? Because um, certainly, if if somebody feels like something was criminal or overtly um, you know, extremely egregious, defamatory, or or something that caught they saw somebody, you know, be really um, 
denigrated in some way, you know, those types of things, you might want to bring it to the commission and then have, and then have the commission formally ask the town, uh, the town manager or the chief of police or to, you know, take action. If it's something where they felt like they, they saw somebody be mistreated in, um, in a store or, or on a sidewalk by another resident um, and you knew who it was, then, then that's the type of thing that you could potentially reach out and try to get more information and then that's the type of thing you, you might, as I think Joe mentioned this, sometimes you might just want to have a representative of the commission kind of approach the store or, or business and, and talk to them about what was reported to them or reported to you and, and why that might not, um, you know, might not be the way to respond in certain situations, things like that, provide education, provide outreach to try to connect and help them under, help that understand uh, you know, if it's a, if it's specifically a complaint about a town employee or a board or committee member in town, I absolutely think it needs to come to us first. Uh, I, you know, on any kind of thing like that, and I think Russell backed me up. If we get a complaint, we have an actionable complaint, we'll in, we'll initiate an, uh, an independent investigation. And we'll make sure that we get to the bottom of it. Something was done inappropriately. We'll make sure we handle it. But um, at that point, I don't think it would be appropriate for you to bring anybody in or anything. We just need to we need to jump on it and get it handled in the correct legal way. Russ? Yeah, and I also agree. You, you want to be careful that because there are statutes, there's hate crimes, um, there's, if it's involving the elderly, to the elderly abuse, you just want to be careful that you're not hindering an investigation. Um, someone may make a complaint, which actually, there are a lot of complaints that we get that were run by the DA's office. We'll call the DA's office and say, listen, does this rise to the threshold of this crime or not? because we even get a second opinion on some of them. Just be mindful of that. And, and in our duties, um, there's language in here about, you know, we don't investigate. Um, there's certain language in here, what we can and can't do. I'm trying to look for it right now. Uh, number eight, may report. Uh, nope, nope, what is it? Eight. Do not have the authority to formally investigate complaints, the power to subpoena witnesses, or take sworn testimony. Or adjudicate or mediate the resolution of disputes between individuals or entities. So, so we can do education around the microaggressions and, and things like that, but, and, but not things that potentially rise to the level of violations of ethics or to the level of, of, of hate crime or elder or abuse of any kind right basically what you've just been saying to us yes to be, to be perfectly clear obvious. it's kind of obvious i mean as i say it i'm like of course not of course we wouldn't do that but like you know like oh my gosh no well, i'm not qualified for that <laughs> when i see this largely as is we act as an intermediary if there's someone yeah. if they're not comfortable right. going directly to the town or to uh the police department with right. a complaint um just to help ease that transition to make sure that it's addressed properly mm -hmm. rather than us yeah going out and trying to um investigate uh right in, in terms of uh following up with the store there there's a limit to what we're able to really do and in even that instance i feel like mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah i even feel in that instance it may be that we do a larger public education campaign if we've heard about things happening more often or something we just decide yes. as a commission what to do on um, about things like that i think over time as we hear about these complaints what we'll start to see is trends that yeah. we we know what sort of events and engagement efforts we may want to gear towards right. the community right uh to combat those trends with education right. programs right so we'll need a way to collect this data <laughs> right and that's what right. i think we're hoping the portal would do with that kind of contact us um element for the email um form submission. So yeah. I wanted to make a, a point that's related to this if we're, if we're at sort of a pause. I wonder, so I think it would be good um, if on that page that the, that there is something that's not just like 
negative, like tell us about mm -hmm. the complaint, right? I mean, that should be there. We want it there. Right. Absolutely. But also for people to just, sub, you know, to, um, you know, indicate sort of whether it's, uh, or, or again, maybe just, uh, maybe it's not a portal or a, like a form to fill out, but like you said, they have contact information and then just a sentence or a paragraph that says, you know, we want to know about good stuff that's happening too. Mm -hmm. Like we don't share your story. We're not, <laughs> we're not just here for, you know, for the every, you know, people just to complain. We want to hear about good stuff that is happening related to human rights. Um, um, so anyway. And Jamie, I think that's a great point. I think from most of us, I think we all expect that this to be a very a positive experience in this com this commission to be a very positive force in the town. Mm -hmm. So we, we want to hear all those positive things because uh, um, it'll help us, you know, uh, I think positivity amplified creates more positivity. So I, I think that having you have that knowledge, we can share that and let people know that those things are going on. That helps other people want to want to react the same way. So that's my opinion. Is, yeah, it could be a share. Your, it could be more share your story, and it can and um, you know let them know that we're there to address concerns, but also want to hear um, the positive side of things. In that way, on this form, would we potentially want to have kind of like a a bubble selection where it's suggestions, issue witness, kind of uh, that sort of list, so mm. that when we start to get these. Um, messages coming in, it's easier for us to um, filter data over time as well. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. And so like po positive story issue and suggestion for further engagement efforts mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe, maybe always an other, because I know sometimes when I use forms, if I don't see it exactly, I like to have the opportunity to Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Always, always need the other option. Because right, people also might have ideas for like an event that they saw right. that happened somewhere else that they want to suggest to us, that kind of thing too, that we haven't thought of before. Mm -hmm. okay, can we bring back up the uh, agenda? Yes, I think so. I think, because I think we're starting to get into um, the brainstorming. Brainstorming <laughs> issues. Everybody's favorite part of the meeting, right? <laughs> Okay, that looks like we're getting into the brainstorming session. Brainstorm initial topics of discussion. I have ideas. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I'm interested in um, coordinating maybe with Wenham um, in, on a flag raising for a pride flag in June. And um, these are great. These are all items for future agendas. Um, I've learned a lot at the open meeting. <laughs> the other thing I would really be interested in is the June, Juneteenth uh -huh. activity. Um, it's our, this is the first year that it's a state holiday. Um, and I'm wondering if is the town doing anything to educate employees about the holiday? Uh, we haven't, other than actually just letting them know that they'll be getting that day off, but um, we haven't really done any more on it. I think that um, myself and our human resource director feel um, unprepared to actually do a good, do it justice to explain it. So um, uh, we're sharing the information that people have the day off, but uh, we'd be open to assistance in that regard to make sure that we, we do it justice. So. Mm -hmm. I think the human rights um, coalition had mentioned um, wanting to do something for that as well. So maybe we could connect with them. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Yeah, and um, so Joe, I, I think, uh, so Anna has sent some emails about, uh, you know, on behalf of the coalition of these things that you've already mentioned plus a, a couple others, but I guess you guys probably haven't seen that unless you're unless you're on the board like some of you are. Um, yeah, in fact, I don't even think she shared it to the whole board, Jamie. I think she sent it to you and Sean and me only. So uh, I believe Sean as board chair was waiting till this committee got established so that he could 
forward those recommendations on um, or have a conversation with the board segment about forwarding them on or whatnot. So um, that hasn't transpired yet. All right. So I can share that with uh, with you guys. I mean, I have it I have it here, and it, you know, there's um, yeah, it's one. There's a there's a couple other things. Uh, so if we're in brainstorming, I can throw it out, or if Joe has it handy, he can share it. But I uh, I, can. I don't have it handy, but I could make you a co. Um, I can't. Why can't I? Because somebody else set this meeting up. So as it pertains to the uh, the flags, did right, so the board meeting yet that, or Jamie, you might be able to answer this too. There was, we were supposed to talk about having, erecting a, a flagpole specifically for these types of flags. And did that ever come up at a meeting, Joe, or Jamie? Right, no. so one thing, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh. Just to clarify, the, la the the fly a flag policy, a draft, a template, just an idea as a jumping off point was was given to the board of selectmen a year ago, almost a year ago, not quite a year ago, and uh, they tabled it. So it not no action has been taken. It hasn't been taken off the table. Um, I think that the thinking now is that having this committee involved may or may not be a part of that conversation. That's not my call to make. So. Yeah, and there, I mean, there is one other just reality that I think people <laughs> should be aware of is I think that the Board of Selectmen has voted for the, a, mer a moratorium on, uh, I think, any non-governmental flags at the moment. So, <laughs> and that's not your, that's not your duty, uh, or I don't think you necessarily have a big role in that, or I, when I say you, I mean us, um, but I think you should probably be aware of it, <laughs> so. Um, on whose part is there a moratorium on non-governmental flags? Uh, just, just on the town property. Joe, if Joe, if I'm saying any of this wrong, let me know. But just on just the the town property, it doesn't mean that it couldn't be. Um, so I think like at town hall or at park or whatever, it wouldn't, it wouldn't prevent. It's not a ban on flags being raised. <laughs> it, was a, it was a let's wait and see you until we have a, a policy that everybody feels comfortable with before moving forward. So um, don't open the door before you have a, a standard. So uh -huh. so uh, are we working on a policy? The, I mean, there is one that, as Joe said, has been presented to the Board of Selectmen uh, a while ago, and it's been tabled for quite a while. So does that mean no um, like banners in Patton Park? I know in the past, like about, on the tennis courts. I think it's just flags at flagpoles. Okay. So no flags other than okay. the American flag to fly on flagpoles on town property currently, even though there were pride flags up last June. Correct. So hmm. probably it's because of the pride flags that were up last June. <laughs> it was, uh, well, <laughs> or you uh, can't uh, say that. <laughs> well, no, I can't, I can't say, it's not that I can't say that. I, I, I would say that I think that there was other concern about what other flags might be asked to be flown. Okay. Okay. Uh, also, there was also a concern about what you could. Can you fly another flag on the same pole as an American flag pole? And that's why there was discussions around, well, can we erect a separate flagpole down in Patton Black, for example, and can we have that be where we could fly the different flags? Mm -hmm. um, you know, why can't we do that? And, and that being said, Joe, and I, I'm not speaking for any, only for myself, would it work if this board made a recommendation, this commission made a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen to consider that? I do know that that the human. Okay, I'm just I'm trying to remember the right words for these different organizations because it's a lot. The human Hamilton Women Human Rights Coalition has a Mass Cultural Council grant to buy the flags for Juneteenth and Pride. Yeah, I think and so that that's that flagpole could happen as part of that too. I don't know. And if I'm getting any of this wrong, I'll have to be corrected. But I, yeah, I believe that's part of what's in Anna's email that she has sent to the, at least some of the, to Joe and, and some of the board of selectmen so that, uh, so that she raises that. That's not specifically, 
Um, let's see. Let me just let me just read it. Right. So I think it's. Uh, They want, yeah, so the flag holders on 1A. That, so the specific request is the flag holders on 1A to be used for pride flags from for the month of June. Um, so that's one request. There are some others, but that's one on that topic. Um, so I don't, I don't think those flag poles on 1A are ours. I believe those belong to the American Legion. I believe, I, I can look into that. Legion owns, the polls. Legion owns the polls. We you know, talking about the one the flag holders that hold the individual American flags every year along one A. The okay. Legion owns those. Although we help buy them, but they do own them. Is Wynnum also having the same discussion or will they be flying flags? Do we know? We'll need our liaison to oh, take that as a note. <laughs> I thought last year, I wasn't sure if Wenham, I, I thought the congregational church ended up buying it. Wenham did as well. Oh, they did? Yeah. 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 The town hall. I will, I will, I will connect with my counterpart. <laughs> If you guys want more ideas, I have one. Uh, one thing that I was thinking about before this meeting was uh, inc like having translation services or at least translated information in the housing in the housing buildings. Uh, my grandmother is a resident resident at the Hamilton Housing Authority, and everything's in English. She's Chinese. She can't speak English. She can't read English. So a lot of the times we have. She has to contact us for translating information. And I think for the future, having things like Spanish and Chinese, they're very, they're very uh, widely used languages would be a good thing to add to make our housing uh, like locations in Hamilton and Wenham more inclusive. Absolutely. Definitely. Man. Does your grandmother have, is it issues with um, letters and notices that she gets? That is that the main problem? Yeah, I mean, like all the information is in English. It is that that's how it is. And whenever there's discussions about, um, like, how, thinking about how to bring the seniors together during COVID, and like, I mean, not that I'm involved in the housing authority or like housing committees and all that, but I always think like if there's going to try to foster community, they should also include um, some different languages in there. And do we know the um, makeup of the residents at the senior housing and the various housing authority properties? What do you mean by makeup? I mean, I mean the, 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 the diversity of the residents. So do we, you know, what proportion do we have of, um, at my, I know your grandmother is Chinese, right? And so she would need it in Mandarin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know that there are, at least as far as I know, there are five uh, Chinese residents. There could be more. Um, this You can also think of this as a future-proofing thing mm -hmm. if other residents move in. Right, right. Maya, in, in my uh, line of work, what we use is we use a, a sheet that has multiple languages on it, telling them to call us and ask uh, for a translation. And does the town have a language line um, that we use if, if somebody needs it? It's really cheap. <laughs> I don't pay, think we do. It's, uh, you pay by the use for this language line, but the way it works with um, me is if I have somebody call me, they tell me what language or as clearly, you know, as they can, and then I get an interpreter on the line and I have the interpreter read the letter to them. Would something like that work, do you think? I think so, yeah. I mean, an important thing to consider is a lot of seniors are not great with t cell phones and that type of thing. So I don't know what super accessible options there are, like 
how to connect a phone number to like some sort of button, but you know, it varies per resident, et cetera. The way we, it's just a regular phone call. You know, mm -hmm. somebody would yeah. just, and then just pull in an interpreter and say, please tell this person and then read a sentence. And it's a long process, but it works. At least she'd be able to know and feel like she was included and involved. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I think we have about 20 languages on the form. Um, you know, it's something to think about. It doesn't, it's not very expensive. If we, if maybe the housing authority could uh, just include a sheet with a phone number on it. Is the so, housing authority website um, under the umbrella of the town website? Is that part of what's being updated right now where we could no. add mm -hmm. translation? Housing authority is its own standalone, Jared. So it does not fall under the town, it's not on the town website. Okay. Who is the housing authority uh, rep who's on this board? Joanne okay. Copeland, but she's not here. Okay, so that would be something we could bring up when we have our housing authority rep. The other thing with the cell phones, um, my, uh, when we have the COA director has a seat on this board as well, that's something your COA director would be able to work hand in hand with the housing authority for, for that as well. So I think it would be good if we, for this conversation, if we had the housing authority rep here, as well as have the COA director um, present for this, because those that would kind of tie everything in. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, for brainstorming, I would say uh, that's a great thing, Maya, for you to bring to our attention. Mm -hmm. That definitely yeah. should be should be one of the things we cover in the in the future. Is that also something that with the town page updates, we can set up a, a translation system on our government page? Uh, I've already taken a note to myself to, to look into it. So we could, we could, I have to just see how much it'll cost me. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And, um, and if you wouldn't mind, I would like to check, follow up on the poll, the flag poll um, issue. Uh, I wouldn't mind taking that one off. And, uh, well, I need to have a lot more during the day. I can kind of run down the ground and see where we're at. Yeah, that seems great. That would be great, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I, um, so let's see. So we were, and we talked about Juneteenth, uh, and. Um, uh, you know, so there is de there's definitely a request as well, and this is like you know raising flag <laughs> the flag on government property related to June Juneteenth. Um, as far as Anna's request on behalf of the Human uh, Hamilton Women Human Rights Coalition, no, that's an issue that you know, and it's coming you know it's coming up in the with Juneteenth being now a state holiday. Um, is there some wiggle room on governmental flags with regards to a Juneteenth flag versus the pride flag? Um, that I'm not sure about that. I, I kind of doubt it's a governmental flag, but you're, you're, I mean, you're right. It seems uh, within the scope of <laughs> what should be allowed since it is a state holiday, but, but probably not. The governor has recognized that as a holiday and he put out the order about all state and local municipal governments and buildings being closed on that given day. I read the order. I didn't see anything about flags um, uh, on that, on his order. Nor would I doubt that, that uh, the office of the governor would actually do that anyway. Right. That here in life, the, if we had our own flagpole, we could do something like that. Um, Okay. Could we resort to banners if we're not allowed to do flags? Banners have to be approved by the board of selectmen already anyway, so that would that would be fine. You could you could submit a request, but it would would have to be uh, approved by the board of selectmen. Even hanging the water band banner, I have to get approval of the board of selectmen. So, if someone wants to put together a flyer on Juneteenth. I mean, that's something you we could if we have our website up that's something you can post on the website that's you know yeah. if someone wants to write an article about juneteenth that's something we could the town could consider putting up on 
on their Facebook page and on the town website. You know, that's something to consider too. If you want to, there's several different ways we can push that out through the town. Yeah. And I think actually, to be honest with you, I think it'd be a great way because it's coming up. It'd be a great way for you to kind of, uh, you know, announce yourselves, um, you know, hey, you know, what is Juneteenth? We're here, the Hamilton Human Rights Commission is here to tell you what that's all about. Yeah, here's, what, new state holiday. here's this yeah. new state holiday. Did yeah. you know what it is? You know what it is and why. And um, it, it, it would give, you know, people will begin to connect you with kind of your purpose, you know, and, and know that you're here. <laughs> Joe, is this something we could tap Bobby Gates on the on the shoulder to write an article on Juneteenth? And you know, this is um, I can I can ask him. I just I'm I mean I'm, he'd have to do some. I, I imagine he might have to do some research. So, but I can ask him. Bobby Gates is um, he is our Facebook, our Twitter, kind of our PIO, public information office for the town. So a lot of times we as department heads, or Joe can write an article and then we push it out to Bobby Gates, and he puts it out through all the social media sites. He was a writer for the patch um, a while ago for a lot of time. Actually, for many years, he was a writer for the patch. Of course, Joe doesn't bring up the fact that he was a writer as well. He's very well written. <laughs> he reports in his papers. I wonder if there are any programs or resources we could get at the state level. For, for what? I'm willing to do some research on that for Juneteenth. I mean, well, there there's a North Shore Juneteenth Association. In place. There's actually a North Shore Juneteenth Association. Right. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty great. And they've been around for a few years, too. Yeah, and they're so, pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd be, uh, unless someone else wants to do it, I'd be happy to try and contact them and see if maybe they have um, any sort of publicity or um, materials that we could use so we're not reinventing the wheel. They have some affiliation with the North Shore NAACP group, definitely, already. Um, I know just because that's how I found out about them. Um, yeah, it would be great to um, uh, hook up with them. They're either in Salem or Beverly, I believe. Check it out. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. I'm going to put their Facebook uh, page in the chat. Oh, great. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. I was muted. Thank you, Maya. <laughs> Any other ideas for discussion? We are coming up right on one minute till six o'clock. So we do have, um, we did say we were going to end at six, and I do want to respect people's time, even though I, this is my surprise meeting. So I'm, I don't really feel like I'm in charge of it yet, but. <laughs> You are, but you know, we can go four hours like the selectmen. I'm just kidding. I will not be doing that to you. I will yeah. never do that. A to meeting at six. Jamie and I have a selectmen's meeting at six thirty anyway. So my, I am very sensitive about time. Anyway. Okay, so we have one minute, and we yeah. have one more. We had one last um, thing that I, I wanted to bring up as a possible discussion point for later is during the swearing in. Uh, at the town clerk's office, it does have the language, so help you God, at the end of that. Mm -hmm. And I found that quite interesting. Um, so it's definitely something I'd like to bring up in future. Uh, and that's six o'clock now, so I'll stop talking about it. <laughs> and we, so we still have to decide on a, like a schedule, right? I think that's the Indeed, yeah. Right? Yeah. How frequently are we meeting and when? So just as a point, I did look at the Wenham and they meet on the first Monday of every month. That would be a problem for Jamie because typically board of cycle meetings are the first and third Mondays of every month. Well, I mean, I thought maybe we could do it on a different day actually so that we sync up a little bit. In uh, 
Wednesdays are usually good for me. So, you know, Wednesdays are going to be a challenge for me. Do oh, no, that's not. Well, <laughs> I mean, uh, it's the Affordable Housing Trust uh, generally meets Wednesday evenings, though it's not it's not terribly regular as part of the <laughs> so if I the, the, I guess that's the problem with the housing trust is they're not, they don't have like a regular set. Yeah, unless, unless they have business before then there's no need to meet, so. Um, How about the second Monday following the Wenham? So it'll be the second Monday of the month. That way we get to see what Wenham did. And <laughs> no, honestly, because they may do something and say, we're gonna work with Hamilton. And if we have that, then we can work with them. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. So that would be a, where's my calendar, right here. Jared, are Mondays bad in general for you, or is it just? No, I was just offering Wednesdays since we are on a Wednesday today. Uh, I'm that's... not sure what the foreseeable future looks like, uh, but I may be doing orchestra in the fall, which meets every Monday um, from, I think like around 6 p.m. and onward. And we do early meetings like this one? Well, and then the other thing is, I mean, we could do Wednesdays if, if that's best for everybody else. And uh, and I would just have to tell the Affordable Housing Trust, you know, that that particular Wednesday we can't meet there. I mean, it's usually flexible enough. Or we would just schedule around it like time-wise, I guess. That sound okay, Joe? Yep, that's fine with me. I have a lead meeting some Wednesdays, so it depends on on the Wednesday. Well, I think you you want you wanted to try and determine if you can have a regular meeting, so you want to pick the first Wednesday or the third Wednesday or whatever night. Right. You know, does the league meet sporadically? We're usually or? the first or second Wednesday, so the third Wednesday of the month would be good for me. I'd be clear. And that would give you an opportunity to have a meeting again on April twenty first. That would be good. Yeah. Maya, is that going to work for you? Because that is school vacation week. I'm not going. But... Yeah, that works for me. I'm not going anywhere either. Okay. <laughs> Somebody want what, to make what time? Do you want to? What time? What time of the day do you want to meet? Does five still work for folks, or is there a later time better? That's preferable to me, but I'm not a voting member, so it's up to you guys. <laughs> Elena, what is five o'clock like for you with little kids? Like this. <laughs> <laughs> so doable like this stuff. <laughs> um, Who's she talking to? I was talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I have my headphones on. I like little kids. <laughs> um okay so i'm fine with five i'm fine with later as well at um yeah jamie you want to make a motion <laughs> uh yeah i mean i'd move that we meet the third wednesday of the month as a general rule on uh at 5 p.m Second. Who said second? Christina? Christina holds second. Okay. Call the roll. Nancy Steffest? Nancy Steffest, aye. Jared Hughes? Aye. Elena Walsh? Aye. Christina Holtz? Aye. Ann Brady? Brady, aye. Russ Stevens? Russ Stevens, aye. And Jamie Knutson? Uh, you missed Maya, though. Maya, well, that, we can let her vote on this. It's not really good. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. It could be not I'm voting. voting, but I. <laughs> so um, to submit agenda items for our next meeting, um, they they would need to be in when? I would, I would suggest that um, we'd need to post that meeting no later than mon the Monday preceding, uh, Monday at 5 p.m. So... I would suggest that you would want to make sure that Ann 
uh, as the chair has uh, suggested items by at least the Friday before that, so that you have a chance to organize the agenda. Yes. Yes, please. So if you're looking at April 21st is the next meeting, Friday the 16th is the last opportunity to get items to Ann for consideration for the agenda. Yes, especially because that's the day I get my second COVID vaccine and I might be out of commission for the next <laughs> Take It takes, a, takes 12 hours or so. Right, okay. So then I will be out of commission on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, everyone. So, did we get through everything on the agenda, Joe? Actually, you know what? I'm just realizing Monday is April 19th. Monday this year is a, um, this Monday, April 19th is Patriot's Day. So actually you're gonna have to post by Friday, make it Thursday. Okay. As I'm looking at the calendar, you're going, wait a minute, that's not gonna work. So April, okay, so post on April 16th? Yeah. This time, normally you'll be fine to post on the Monday, but this time, because Monday's a holiday, you got to post on the Friday. Okay. I just like to write everything down in my calendar so I don't forget it. So you've got to get me items on, that's not that, you've got to get me items kind of soon, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 weeks to get me items, April 14th. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm um, sorry, which, when did you want oh, items five for this? Is it next week? At end of the day, April 14th. Okay. And then I'll, get, I'll pull the agenda together on the 15th and post it on the 16th. Okay, great. All right. Thank you, everybody. It's, um, and when you get to around to it next time, you might want to include on the agenda a, a, a place for public comment and that might be another place another way for the commission to take in uh, comment or concerns people may come forward at a public meeting uh, to to bring something up so um, most most meetings should have some public comment I didn't see the need to do it tonight but definitely I think in the future you want to have that I know in the board of selectmen meeting that's usually at the beginning yeah great will do Joe do you want uh, do you do old business new business yeah, you could probably have something on the uh, at, at the end of the agenda for new business items or, or you know, to recap old business items. You'll, you know, we'll, we'll work with you the first couple so until you get the, the hang of it. Okay. Um, Pat and I can help you out with that. Um, so to adjourn, we're going to need a motion, a second, and a roll call vote. Make a motion to adjourn. Seconded. Second. Nancy Steffes. Nancy Steffes, I. Jerry Hughes? Aye. Elena Walsh? Aye. Christina Holtz? Christina Holtz, aye. Ann Brady? Ann Brady, aye. Maya Beach? Maya Beach, aye. Ross Stevens? Ross Stevens, aye. Jim Knudsen? Jim Knudsen, aye. It's unanimous. Everybody have a good evening. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye. See you in a few minutes, Jamie.